Good morning. We welcome you all to worship this morning in the name of our loving Father with a special welcome to friends and guests. We're so and new members. They've been worshiping with us uh, online for months, and now they're here. So yay! It's good to have you. Um, okay. Our heartfelt sympathy and prayers to Bruce, Mary Kay, Greg, and Judy McCoy, and all the McCoys and Weikerts at the loss of Helen McCoy. Uh, she passed away last Wednesday. Funeral services will be here tomorrow morning, 11 a.m., calling from 10 to 11, also here. Uh, and we are going to be live streaming it, so if you can't make it to the service, you can watch it at home. Uh, following worship today, brief worship and music committee meeting. Um, and next Sunday is Transfiguration of Our Lord as well as Valentine's Day, and we will be getting back to um, communion at that point. Uh, and we did start uh, youth Sunday school today. We had, I think, like eight kids that were here, so yay! Uh, please remember to bring the kids for Sunday school at 9 a.m. Coming up, sadly, we will not be having our pancake sausage supper this year because of COVID restrictions. Oh, well. But uh, Wednesday, February 17th, um, the Lenten Bible study begins on Ash Wednesday. Uh, we'll be at 1230, um, followed in the afternoon by the Lenten worship service at 7 p.m. here. Uh, this, the series we're doing this year is called Places of the Passion, and we will be having community Lenten services, but they will be here uh, at 7 p.m., we won't be having a, a dinner um, for obvious reasons, but we will be here for the service because we'll be live streaming them and we're set up for it here. Uh, if you wish to order your Easter flowers, uh, the deadline is February 21st, so it's only a couple more weeks. So, you know, don't think, oh, I'll do it next week. Do it now. On our prayer concerns, <clears throat> Um, Matt Evans, who's been in the hospital with uh, pneumonia, uh, Catherine Davis, uh, Charity Pickup, Evelyn Welch. Evelyn Welch fell down, got a black eye. She's pretty stove up, so we're praying for her. Uh, Jeff Davis, um, the family, of course, the family and friends of Helen McCoy and the family and friends of Spencer Lynch. Do we have any other announcements this morning? Okay, when I got up this morning, it was 19 degrees. So, in honor of the lovely weather, I have a special prelude this morning. Snow glows white on the mountain tonight, not a footprint to be seen. Fear of isolation, and it looks like I'm the queen. The wind is howling like this swirling storm inside. Couldn't keep it in, heaven knows I've tried. Don't let them in, don't let them see. Be the good girl you always have to be. Conceal, don't feel, don't let them know. Well, now they know. Let it go, let it go. Can't hold it back anymore. Let it go, let it go. Turn away and slam the door. I don't care what they're going to say. Let the storm rage on. The cold never bothered me anyway. It's funny how some distance makes everything seem small. And the fears that once controlled me can't get to me at all. It's time to see what I can do 
to break the limits and break through. No right, no wrong, no rules for me. I'm free. Let it go, let it go. I am one with the wind and sky. Let it go, let it go. You'll never see me cry. Here I stand, and here I'll stay. Let the storm rage on. My power flurries through the air into the ground. My soul is spiraling in frozen fractals all around. And one thought crystallizes like an icy blast. I'm never going back. The past is in the past. Let it go. Let it go, and I'll rise like the break of dawn. Let it go, let it go, that perfect girl is gone. Or I stand in the light of day, let the storm rage on. The cold never bothered me anyway. We sing together the opening hymn.
In the beginning was the Word. It was with God, and the Word was God. In the Word was life, and the life was the light of all people. The Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, full of grace and truth. We sing the scripture song. Light shone in darkness at the new creation, bathing in beauty, nature's revelation, all that has been crying out. Shone in darkness at the new creation, Christ rose in glory, won for us salvation. Sing earth and heaven, hymns of jubilation, praise for the light, amen. Light shines in darkness till the full creation, Christ's body groaning suffers tribulation longs for god's justice global transformation praise for the light amen the lord be with you let us pray everlasting god you give strength to the weak and power to the faint make us agents of your healing and wholeness that your good news may be made known to the ends of your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Would the children please come forward? Right there. How are we doing, guys? Good? I heard you had a fun lesson in Sunday school today. What was it about? A donkey? What, I what? Was, he was the donkey. I was the person. You were the person. Okay. What was special about this donkey? It talked. Yeah. Do you remember what it said? That was a donkey. <laughs> yeah, donkeys don't usually talk. Oh, wait. We got some more kids. Emma, I've got candy. Come on. I knew you were coming. Emma's having trouble. There she is. Okay. So the donkey talks. Now, was it really the donkey talking? No. What, who was talking? God. God was talking. That's right. Yeah. Sit down, Hunter. So God talks to us all the time. Uh, not very often to a donkey donkey. But uh, how does God talk to us? How, do we, how does God talk to us? You don't know? You want I me know. to tell you? I know. What? Um, yes, because he made us. Playing. Whenever, yeah, when you're praying, you're talking to God, and if, you, if you're quiet and kind of listen, God will talk back to you. I mean, it doesn't, it's not a big booming voice usually. Um, sometimes it's just something somebody says to you, you're like, oh, okay. Or something you see, like when you see butterflies. That's God reminding us that we're going to live eternally with him, right? And I know you guys do butterflies all the time. When spring comes, please, and everything starts coming up and there's new life, that's God telling us that we're going to have new life, right? So you need to pray and you need to pay attention because God is talking to us all the time. What's another way God can talk to us? You know, if you're sitting quietly with this uh, really big book in front of you, right, reading the Bible. Reading the Bible is another way God talks to us. So how many of you read your Bibles and pray every single day? You read the Bible zero days. <laughs> Do you read your Bible stories? Okay. Yeah. The, the Bible is kind of hard for you guys to read, isn't it? Because it's really big and thick and long and has big words. But there are special ones with the stories for, like, you guys. And it makes the stories kind of fun. Like, you know, Balaam and the donkey and the donkey talking, right? So... Think about that. You know, read your Bible and 
pray because that's how you're talking to God and that's how God is talking to you. Okay? All right. to keep you quiet for the rest of the service. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, you do that. Thank you, Claire. Our first uh, lesson this morning is from the 40th chapter of Isaiah. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Do you not know? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? God sits enthroned above the circle of the earth, and its people are like grasshoppers. God stretches out the heavens like a canopy and spreads them out like a tent to live in. The Lord brings princes to naught and reduces the rulers of this world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root in the ground than God blows on them and they wither and a whirlwind sweeps them away like chaff. To whom will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? The one who brings out the starry host one by one and calls them each by name. Because of great, God's great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and complain, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by my God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. God will not grow tired or weary, and his understanding no one can fathom. God gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary, and the young stumble and fall, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Here ends the first reading, the word of the Lord. We will read from Psalm 147 responsibly. Hallelujah. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor God with praise. The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem and gathers the exiles of Israel. The Lord heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. The Lord counts the number of the stars and calls them all by names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit. To God's wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music upon the harp to our God, who covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth, making grass to grow upon the mountains. God provides the food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they cry. God is not impressed by the might of the horse, and has no pleasure in the speed of the runner. But finds pleasure in those who fear the Lord, in those who await God's steadfast love. Hallelujah. Our second reading is from the ninth chapter of 1 Corinthians. Yet when I preach the gospel, I cannot boast, for I am compelled to preach. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. If I preach voluntarily, I have a reward. If not voluntarily, I am simply discharging the trust committed to me. What then is my reward? 
just this, that in preaching the gospel I may offer it free of charge, and so not make use of my rights in preaching it. Though I am free and belong to no one, I make myself a slave to everyone, to win as many as possible. To the Jews I became like a Jew, to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not having the law, though I am not free from God's law, but am under Christ's law, so as to win those not having the law. To the weak, I became weak, to win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that by all possible means I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in its blessings. Here is the second reading, the word of the Lord. gospel is the gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand, and helped her up. The fever left her, and she began to wait on them. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door, and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him, and when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you! Jesus replied, let us go somewhere else, to the nearby villages, so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. So he traveled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Creator and from our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. I want to talk about Paul's letter to the Corinthians today because it has some pretty important things to say to us as we live our lives proclaiming God's promises to those around us. And I know all of us are doing that every day, right? Hmm. In this passage we just read, Paul is discussing Christian freedom. Now we've talked about our freedom in the gospel before, and we've also discussed the responsibility that comes with that freedom. This is the topic Paul addresses in this passage from Corinthians, which is a continuation from last week. And I didn't touch on Corinthians much last week, and I want to talk, so I want to talk about it today. In last week's lesson from Corinthians, Paul was talking about eating meat sacrificed to idols. We know from the way he words this portion of the letter that Paul was responding to questions put to him by the believers in Corinth. Now remember, Corinth was a cosmopolitan city populated by people from all over the known world, and there were 12 temples in the city to worship the various Greek gods. This is where the question about eating meat came in. It was the tradition of the day to take a meat sacrifice to the temple of whatever god one was going to worship. The usual practice was to divide the offering into thirds. One third was burned on the altar. One third went to the priest and one-third was returned to the who would then, then take it home 
and to share with his or her family. The surplus meat from the priest's share was sold in the marketplace where anyone could purchase it. So pretty much any meat available in the city of Corinth had been an offering to an idol at some point. The concern Paul was addressing was that there were new Christians in the church who, until recently, had been faithful worshipers of the idols of Corinth. Now they knew the idols and the gods of Corinth were false, and they believed there was one true God and that Jesus had died for their sins and forgiveness and eternal life was a gift of God through grace. They knew all this. However, after a lifetime of eating meat sacrificed to one God or another and associating that meat with the worship of that God, these new believers had trouble seeing the meat as simply food and not part of a sacrifice to a God they, know, they now knew was false. Paul tells those who don't have this difficulty that for them to eat meat that everyone who had been sacrificed to an idol might upset and confuse those who were still new in their faith. Therefore, out of love for your brothers and sisters in Christ who are not as strong or as knowledgeable in their faith as you might be, you ought to refrain from doing things, in this case, eating meat sacrificed to idols, which might cause one of the new believers to stumble in their faith. So what does this have to do with their freedom? We are free. God's love and gift of grace has freed us from sin. Because we are saved by grace, we are freed from trying to earn our salvation by doing good deeds and keeping the rules. We know, we know that playing cards, dancing, engaging in other similar recreational activities is not going to keep us out of heaven. However, we all know people who hang on to those practices, who don't dance, don't smoke, don't play cards, don't drink, don't eat meat on Friday. Not because they really believe by doing these things they'll lose their, lose their salvation, but because that's how they were taught and they just can't let it go. Paul says that when we minister to these people, we need to be sensitive to those things. And that's what Paul meant when he said, for though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all so that I might win more of them. To Jews I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law I became as one outside the law. To the weak I became weak. I, I have become all things to all people that I might by all means save some. When Paul was living among faithful Jews, he would observe their dietary and cleanliness laws, even though Paul knew they were not necessary. Flaunting his, his freedom in the gospel, eating a ham and cheese sandwich in a kosher home, would probably offend the ones who lived there so much they would never listen to him when he tried to tell them about Jesus. When he was with those who believed the meat in the marketplace was dedicated to a particular god, he would not eat it in order not to offend, even though Paul knew it didn't matter. There, there are days, I'll change what I'm wearing four times, depending on whom I'm going to visit, because I don't want to offend anyone or make people uncomfortable. There are days when I eat stuff that are not my wake reduction plan because I don't want to offend my host, who has just served me a chocolate milkshake and Oreo cookies, and I certainly don't want to do anything that will get in the way of the message of the gospel. Because proclaiming the gospel, that's the bottom line. The reason Paul became all things to all people was to reach the people where they were at with the truth of the gospel. You can't begin telling people about Jesus by first telling them that everything they have ever known and believed and practiced is wrong and your way is the right way. This is not how you win friends and influence people, and it is certainly will not be helpful in the proclamation of love and promises of God. Paul would put aside what he knew, his knowledge, and do whatever he needed to do in love in order to win new believers to Christ. Like he wrote in his letter eight of this, in chapter eight of this letter, knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Our goal should always be to build one another up in love even if that means putting aside something we know for the sake of winning another brother or sister to Christ. 
Jesus was denounced by Jewish Pharisees, priests, and scribes because Jesus became all things to all people. He, hang, he hung out with known sinners. He talked to Gentiles. He touched lepers. He cured the demon-possessed. He ate in the home of tax collectors. He traveled with women. Jesus did all these things in order to build people up in love so they could hear the message he had come to bring, that God loved them. Paul tells us he was compelled to do the same. Compelled. He didn't simply want to preach the gospel. He had to. And he would do whatever it took to faithfully proclaim the good news of Jesus the Christ. We are free. We are free to spread the message of the love of God. And we, too, need to be willing to do whatever we need to do, even set aside our freedom, in order to proclaim the gospel of God faithfully and in ways that those who need to hear it can. Amen. We sing the hymn, Lord, Speak to Us. Christ, we have heard the word of truth, the gospel of our salvation. We believe in him and are marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We must build ourselves up in our most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. We must keep ourselves in the love of God, looking forward to the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. If anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Behold, everything has become new. God has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Therefore, let us be reconciled to God and to one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your holy name 
Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sin for our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. My sisters and brothers, rejoice. Let us mend our ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, and live in peace. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Everybody wave. Let us pray. Merciful God, in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you embrace our lives with your great love for humanity. With joy and gladness, we ask that these gifts may be for many a sign of that love, and that we may continue to share in your divine life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the preaching of St. Paul. We thank you, Lord, that he was compelled to preach the gospel so that all people everywhere could hear it and understand it and accept it. We pray, Lord, that you would help us to likewise proclaim your promises. Help us to become all things to all people so that by these means we might save some. Lord, in your mercy. Loving Father, there are so many lost sheep out in the world. We pray that you put such a hunger for you in their hearts that they search you out. Use us, Lord, to reach out to them and proclaim to them the love of God. Lord, in your mercy. Loving Father, we pray for those who do spend their lives proclaiming your gospel. We ask, Lord, that you give them boldness in their witness, keep them safe in places where their lives are in danger. We pray, Lord, for pastors and missionaries and bishops. We ask, Lord, that you watch over Elizabeth and Brenda and Francis. Lord, in your mercy. God of strength and healing, we pray for all those who are sick and in special need of your healing care. Touch them with your healing hand. We pray, Lord, for all those affected by COVID. We pray, Lord, for Bridget and David for Matt, Catherine, Charity, and Evelyn, and Jeff. We pray for Jerry. Lord, in your mercy. God of comfort, we pray for all those who have recently lost loved ones, that they might find hope in the promises of eternal life. We pray, Lord, for the family and friends of Helen McCoy and Spencer Lynch. Lord, in your mercy. God of presence, we pray for all those of our family who are not able to be with us in worship. Help them to know. We keep them in our hearts and prayers. Watch over Linda, Paul, Carol, and Libby. Be with Roy and Sue, John, Mary Jane, and Terry. Watch over Joan, Myrna, Bob, and Annie. Be with Wanda, Carl, Margie, Jean, and Kay. Be with Jerry and Susie, Larry, Linda, and Eleanor. Watch over Jerry, Lila, and Keith, Susan, Clarence, Joe, Don, and Verna. Lord, in your mercy. God of protection, be with all men and women who have put their lives on the lines for the safety and well-being of others. We ask, Lord, that you watch over all firefighters, policemen and women, everyone in the medical field, doctors, nurses, nurses' aides, therapists, first responders, par paramedics, ambulance drivers, and we pray, Lord, for all those in the military. Watch over James, John, David, Ryan, and Anthony. Be with Brandon, Eli, and Cullen, Brooke, Jefferson, Mallory, Mary, Josh, Ryan, Derek, Ian, and Michael, Lord, in your mercy. 
all that we ask, all that you see that we need, grant to us, Father, in the name of him who died and rose again and has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Okay. Richard's 90th birthday was yesterday. So uh, Roger is going to go get uh, cookies, and they're prepackaged, so everybody gets a little bag of cookies, uh, a little bottle of water, and we've got an ice cream cake coming. So we're going to get those passed out while we're singing, so he doesn't know. He's downstairs in his counting room, okay? And now as you go your way, may our loving God go with you, ahead of you to show you the way, above you to watch over you, behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, and within you to give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. We sing our final hymn. Shine.
Surprise! Sit down. Sit. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Richard. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not every day your church. Of what, 40 years now? Something like that. <laughs> turns 90, so we just wanted to do something special for you. Now, go company. <laughs> go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.